Well, hello there. Oh, hey, what's up, Jim? I leave it to the lawyer to come up with the scam on how to make the most super shekels. I, yeah, I mean, we just got I, them I, all day. I, I, I heard, I heard it's been nothing but you for like 11 hours sitting here reading super chats. And I felt he has about four hours left. <laughs> I felt terrible for him. I'm, I'm six hours behind on them still. Oh. Oh, well, hey, you know, you enjoy that. I, I actually popped on for a sec. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind. I, I wanted to ask you a question. I, I don't know if you've seen uh, the Alex Jones deposition that just went up. I haven't Ooh. watched it. I saw the, uh, you know, I saw that it, it got leaked. Yeah, it got put up. Uh, so at the very end, well, that's actually even more interesting because at the very tail end of it, um, they had said that they had a confidentiality for 30 days that it couldn't be released for 30 days. So if it if this happened after the first, uh, whoever put it up is probably going to be liable for something, I would guess. Yeah, maybe. It, I mean, the that's the hard part of discovery is is even when it's supposed to be confidential, things leak. Lots of people work at law firms, especially ones that are going after Alex Jones and that he's representing. And it's hard to figure out who actually put it out. Well, what I was really curious about, and I just wanted to get your take because you obviously have more knowledge on this than me. Um, during the deposition, when Jones is being questioned and he's presenting, uh, the opposing lawyers presenting information, sure. um, he's he's presenting clips of Jones' show and you know statements that he had made. Uh, but instead of just you know presenting them individually, uh, you know, uh, giving a little bit of runtime to them, what he was doing is he'd take like three or four seconds of like a bunch of different clips and then splice them all together, and then he'd throw them at Jones and say. Well, look, you said this repeatedly, and it'd be three seconds from this show, three seconds from this show, three seconds from this show, uh, and they're spanned out over the course of maybe you know six months in between one, three months in between another. Sure. Um, and, and I found that very weird. Uh, and Jones' lawyers got really upset about it too, and they're like, "Well, you know, I've never seen anybody do this." And Jones kept, you know, when he was giving his answers, he's like, "I don't know how to respond to this because I don't have any context for what I was saying this about." You know, you're asking me what what did you mean with this, and he's like, "Well, I don't even know." what the sentence directly in front of it was <laughs> or, or what I said directly after it. Um, and one of the craziest things was, you know, the, the opposing lawyer went after Jones and said, well, how you didn't do your due diligence. You never researched things properly. Uh, you'd get information wrong. You'd get uh, you'd present misinformation, you really hounded him on that. And then as he's presenting these clips of statements that Jones had made, uh, when Jones asked, well, when, when was this from? And he's, he gave a date and it turned out he got the information wrong. So Ooh. the lawyer that put the clips together couldn't even get the information right when he was presenting it to Jones. And I'm thinking in my head, well, how can you go after him over and over again about, you know, presenting misinformation? And that was six years ago, seven years ago. Mm. And now you're you're up here and you've worked on this the week prior to the deposition. And you can't even remember the date of the clip that you're playing for him. Um, and so I, I don't know. Is that weird, though, during a deposition to do that? Do they? I can't imagine if you presented a police report that you just present a piece of paper with one line from it and none of the other police, you know, and the whole um, entirety of the police report is like redacted. Like, oh, I just want to talk about this one line from this police report, but trust me, it's the police report. Well, uh, it kind of depends on how you're doing the deposition. I mean, if, if it's from a police report and you ask them, is this a line from the police report? They, you know, they could just say, I have no idea what's in the police report. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if it's something, did you say this? Did you say this to this officer? I mean, the the question is, do they know what you're going to talk about in deposition? Do they know what materials you have? There's um, typically how these things work out is you serve you serve your initial complaint on someone and then you go through initial discovery once you get past your preliminary motions. And most lawsuits will go through this this process where they go to their initial discovery phase. And so that involves a disclosure of everything you've got and then your request for everything else. So then the opposing side knows roughly what you have and they know what you're after. So then you strategize for depositions like, okay, well, I know they've got this report and they're going to be asking me questions about that. I know they've got, uh, you know, these video clips and they're going to be asking me questions about that. Problem with Alex Jones is he's got so much material. Like you could find, you could find anything and have him well say, did you well, yeah, say that, that that's what Jones said actually during the deposition one of his responses was something akin to well you have to understand I do a show what is it six days a week three to four hours a day he, uh, you know and he kept repeating well the because uh, this is about uh, Sandy Hook he kept repeating well the Sandy Hook material wasn't even one tenth of one percent of my programming right. and this years ago 
Um, and he's like, you know, I, I know that you've been very focused on this, but he said, you know, I, I, I haven't gone over every single show that I've done. So it's hard for me to answer your questions if I don't have any context surrounding the clips that you're playing, and let alone when you put 10 different clips together to try to get me to address something. Yeah, what he wants to do, and, and this, is, this is a mean tactic, and it depends on how hostile the litigation is, but what if he put clips together that weren't Alex Jones's? Um, oh, well, well, that actually, they brought that up. Because uh, Jones, once his lawyer interjected, and this made the, um, the opposing lawyer really angry, by the way, because he's like, oh, this is Texas rules, and you agreed to it, and you can't, you can't uh, give spoken objections. You just have to say one of these four things. That's all you can say. Yep. Um, but the lawyer kept pressing and saying, you know, these are heavily edited. Um, I've never seen anything like this. This is terrible. And I think Jones picked up on that really quickly because every response after that, he said, I don't know how to respond to your edited clips. And then Jones started pointing out the audio doesn't sound right. He said the audio sounds like it's been edited. Um, and actually, if you listen to it, it, it kind of does. Uh, the, the volume and just the way it sounds is not it, it's different. It's hard to explain, but it does sound a little bizarre. Yeah, one one tactic that a lawyer, I don't know, this would be questionable about whether you could do it, but one tactic a lawyer could certainly do is have an Alex Jones impersonator saying lines and say, did you say this? And then you get them on perjury. Because uh, if, if they're like, well, I must have, right? Sure, I did. But they didn't actually say it because it was something else. Now, a judge might get really pissed off if you do that. But at some level... Uh, it depends on what you're trying to establish, but if you're trying to establish that they don't know, that they're frazzled, that the, the information is is not well thought out, I guess you could try and introduce it that way. But now Alex Jones's lawyers are, of course, going to know that that's their tactic, right? So they're going to say, well, th they'll be already developing their counter argument for that is, look, he's trying to trip him up by asking him, taking these clips from shows that are six years old, clips that may not have even been him. They're trying to establish that he's frazzled. But what what person on earth could remember every conversation they've ever had? My client just happens to be conversing with the entire world, right? Yeah, and there, yeah, there were a couple other interesting bits. If you get a chance to watch it, it's up on YouTube. I put the links. It's like three hours long. Yeah, um, I'd love to. Uh, on my Twitter timeline. But um, two of the more interesting things that came up aside from, you know, the opposing lawyer doing this was uh, they talked about his divorce and during his divorce with his, his wife, um, he had said that he played a character on the show. And so I, I think he was trying to establish, well, you're not really news. You're an entertainer. You know, what, which is it? Which are you going to go with? Uh, and Jones like gave a clarifying statement saying, no, no, you people have misinterpreted that. Uh, it was talking about a specific clip where I dressed up like the Joker and it was me trying to explain to the judge uh, that that was satire, that I'm not really dressing up like the Joker every day and thinking that's real. Uh, and then the other thing was related to the Vegas shooting. I, I don't know if this has been talked about before, but the opposing lawyer ran into a, a brick wall because uh, apparently Jones had to sign uh, non-disclosure agreements relating to sources uh, that gave him information that I guess is confidential. And mm. so it was, it was really kind of a weird, uh, Jones got really quiet. He's like, I can't talk about this. There's an NDA involved. Um, I was shown specific confidential information I can't publicly talk about. Uh, so it's really fascinating, but yeah, I just wanted to get your take on that because I, I, the only other depositions I've really watched were like Gates way back in the day and a few others. Sure. Uh, but I wasn't used to like seeing somebody. It, it just felt very bizarre. It seemed like the the guy really wanted to get a gotcha moment, uh, and he couldn't get it, and so he'd always followed up with something like, "Well, hey, I mean, just between you and me, right? We'd agree that." He always kept trying to get Jones to be, you know, the nice guy routine. Like, come on, buddy, you, you know, we can we can be relaxed here. You can just agree with me that you're insane and you did all these terrible things and <laughs> just just go, enter it into the record for us, you know? Yeah, you 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 murdered those children. You know you did it. You know you did it. Uh, just agree to it, right? Like that's that's what they that's what they basically want to do. He's their demon. Um, no, I mean Texas deposition rules are wild. Uh, most states deposition rules are wild. Um, but Texas, yeah, you, your only objection is you can object to the form of the question and then you can object to, uh, I mean, not much else in all honesty. It's, and even if you object to form, you typically have to answer the question anyway. Um, so they, they can try some crazy stuff. Uh, it, it all depends on how hostile it is. And I think if I had to mind game, I guess what's going on with the other lawyer is he thinks 
right now that he's got a free pass to go after Jones in whatever way he wants because of the public perception of this case. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Um, I, I could see one of the, uh, I guess, vectors he was trying to hit him on. Um, he, tr he basically tried to dig into how he verifies his sources. Where are you getting them when you make statements on your show? Right. Um, and then he tried to pin him down on an ambulance statement. And he kept going at it. I'm wondering, okay, why is this guy? He keeps bringing up the ambulance clips of the kid, you know, of the kids supposedly walking around the school repeatedly. You know, why does he keep bringing it up? Why does he keep bringing it up? And then I got it. So he'd set it up to, are you entertainment? Are you news? Where do you get your information? How do you source it? How do you verify it? And then he finally brings it all home with basically stating, well, you never saw this police report, right? You didn't have this information. You know, you were you're going off speculation. Now, and then he phrases it. If you had a kid and you found out that ambulances and paramedics weren't allowed into the school to help your child after they were mortally wounded or potentially dead, that would be distressing to you, right? That would cause harm, wouldn't it? It would upset you. So I think what he was trying to do is get it where Jones admitted that he made a statement that would cause distress, right? Like, yeah, you, you did something that would hurt you if that happened to you and you knowingly did it. Uh, but he took like an hour to do it, right? It just took him forever to get there. And by the time he did... Um, you know, they kept dancing around the wire editing clip stuff. So sorry to der derail your stream. I just wanted, oh, yeah. I thought it really interesting and I just wanted to get your take on it. So, sorry for yeah. derailing the super chat stream with actual, <laughs> with, 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 with actual Ricada law subject matter. No, the, uh, the last thing I'd, I'd, I'd say on that is um, it sounds like the lawyer screwed up. If he took, if he took an hour to get to that, if that's what he was really trying to get to. And I, I, I think I trust your perception on where it's going. I'll, I'll tell you when I watch it and if I get a different read. But if he was trying to get there, but he spent so much time trying to either build the fake rapport and then then he ended up blowing it and having uh, Jones's lawyer kind of call him out and signal to Jones, then he may have completely it may look like a disaster because he may have completely, you know, uh, telegraphed his move too early. And that's a risk if you're trying to play this long game of, look, I'm going to build my trust. I'm going to weasel my way in there. I'm going to get them off uh, on the back foot. And then I'm going to drop the hammer rather than dropping the hammer early. And, right. Uh, yeah, that's at least how I mean, that's I, I'm trying to condense like the first hour and a half of it at the very least. Right. I mean, there's there's it's very long <laughs> and it's um, <laughs> it, it's it's it really is fascinating. I, and again, I don't know if it's um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that it's legal for it to be up. I'm going to guess that. Um, cause I think it's on a, uh, a law firm's YouTube account. So I think it's the guys that, uh, questioned him that put it up, Sure. Uh, but I'm not a hundred percent certain, but, um, yeah, both parts are up. Comments are disabled and it just went up recently and it's fascinating. So if you guys, uh, later on get tired of reading all this super chats and making all that money and want to, <laughs> want to watch something entertaining for a few minutes, uh, it's, it's really, oh, and Jones, by the way. I, I, I actually I'm starting to think that it's not an act because like the lawyer asked him a question and Jones just dead stares him and goes, well, I'd like to tell you about the psychic vampires. Oh, yeah. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. And the room just goes silent as he starts talking about psychic vampires. And I was like, this is amazing. So he's either he's either fully committed or he's like the best. Uh, he's got the best poker face on the planet. Oh, I think, I think, um, yeah, my guess is his lawyers went in there and they're like, we don't know exactly what uh, tactic they're going to use with you. So we'll just object at the moment we think that's something they think is important. And then you, based on our objection and how firm we press it, that's how you know how to react. I, I think that was the game plan going in. Yeah, so once it's a good game up, plan. Yeah, once they brought up the clips, he hit that. And then I think he started to pick up on the, are you an entertainer? Are you news? How do you present your information? Um, and like, yeah, the guy, the guy throwing out questions, asked some wild stuff. I mean, he said, oh, you use this guy as a source. And Jones is like, yeah, he was a, a professor. He was on TV. He talked to the news and he goes, well, wouldn't you agree that that man is insane? And I'm thinking like, that's a real subjective viewpoint. Like, how am I supposed to agree with, I'm not a psychiatrist. I can't, uh, you know, speak to his mental faculties, but I, I think Jones is like, you know what? Let's just talk about psychic vampires. And that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, what a... What a brilliant move because that's uh, that's when you when you go into deposition, you have to assume that you have more information or at least better information than the other person. And you're just trying to get to get to uh, them to trip up. Right. That's the whole goal of deposition, because you you're not going to you can't find information that you don't know exists. 
So you either want to get them to put something on the record, or you want to trip them up and get perjured on the record. So you're, you're always assuming that you're a step ahead of the person you're questioning. The problem is if the person you're questioning is literally believes in psychic vampires, you're at an immediate disadvantage because he has way more woke information than you'll ever possess. Ah, oh, the psychic vampire <laughs> tactic forever known now, introduced into law theory. Oh, the no, psychic yeah. vampire. It, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah, I think Jones did a convincing enough job at, at least putting forward the notion that what he talked about, he did believe in, um, and that the sources that he was using to present the information he thought uh, were believable. But they, they, they tried a few different tactics. They tried using his own um, employees, I guess. Paul Joseph Watson at the time worked there. Yeah. Uh, and, and saying, well, you know, PJW would disagree. If I bring him in right now and have him testify, if I get his statements, he's going to say, you're insane, isn't he? And Jones is like, well, you know, I, I don't mind control my employees. They can think whatever they like. We normally disagree on things. I mean, he's very calm about it. And he was like, yeah, I can't speak for him. You're going to have to fly him out and ask him. So lizard, it, lizard aliens, your honor, the defense rests. Oh, yeah. He talked about David Icke. Yeah. yeah <laughs> he, talked, he brought up he brought up lizard people, too, during one of the questions. And, and this is all and this is all getting typed into the legal statements this is all getting typed in oh it's brilliant it's, it's officially accounted as part of the suit going into our government into our records of all these lawsuits it's great man i can't uh, decide if i want him to to believe it or if i want him to be that good i can't decide which well one there's no, well you can't play a character in in uh in court that's not right to play a character in that it's legally defensible if he believes it I mean, that's, that's just a different category than if he's pulling one over and being an actor on everybody because he has to tell the truth. No, yeah, he, he said definitively, <clears throat> excuse me, he said, no, uh, everything I sh uh, bring up on the show, everything that I talk about, I believe. That's right. He said, it's not, it's not a character. He said, unless I'm in costume or something, that's when he referenced David Icke. He's like, when I'm dressed up as a lizard person, um, <laughs> then that's, that's obviously <laughs> satire. But if it's just me at the desk talking, I really believe what I'm saying. And he was very firm about that. So... I, I think his lawyers probably coached him well before he went in there. And I think um, the guy asking the questions probably got a little overzealous and thought he could really, you know, work, he, he work some kind of uh, magical, um, oh, I, I'm, I, Matlock kind of technique. You know what I mean? He's going to win a war for your mind. Yeah. The, real, the real Columbo friendly. tactic. <laughs> yeah. Just one Take more thing. Down. Yep. <laughs> oh, fantastic. No, man, I gotta, I gotta watch it. I saw it. And of course, the the way I found out about it was I swiped left on my phone and got the list of headlines. And it was from a predictable publication who I don't even remember what it was, Vox or something. And it said uh, the Alex Jones deposition is now released on video and it makes him look way worse than you would have even thought. And I was like, OK, he probably did better in that deposition than anyone expected then. Yeah, that's unbiased media. There you go. Yeah. Doing their job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he brought. Oh, oh, God! And then they asked about the statement about. Um, do, do you think that? I, I don't know. I, I don't watch enough Alex Jones to know like the craziest things that he said. But they brought up and said, um, "Didn't you say that the children were faking being dead and that you saw them somewhere else?" And then Jones just goes off on like a spiel and he's like, "Hey, uh, there were these Pakistani kids that were supposed to be dead in a bombing, but I saw them later on doing a photo op." And the opposing <laughs> lawyer is like, I'm, what? <laughs> it was really amazing. I think yeah. I know what he's talking about. But um, yeah, the, ha the Hamas kids that yeah. would, uh, in yeah, the bombing, yeah. they would actually stage victims to get anger against Israel. And then later they would see those kids walking around just fine. Right. And they, so well, they'd see the same, the same kid and the same, same mom in different pictures at different bombings with, it was, a, yeah. it was a different dead kid and a different mom with them, you know, not There's, to defend what Alex Jones is saying at all. Oh, I defended a hundred percent about the shooter victims. He, uh, he apparently has recanted his perspective on Sandy hook. Like he, I think he originally said it was a false flag and then he yeah. changed his tune. Uh, what they're trying to actually peg him with. If I read, um, I, I haven't, uh, followed the court case since it went back to state court because it's harder to get the documents. Mm. But if, if what I remember their argument was, it's basically not that Alex Jones was saying the defamatory statements. It was that this guy that he interviewed right. is saying the defamatory statements and Jones gave him a platform, which I think is horrifically dangerous right. to, to say that that's Jones's fault. Like, you didn't verify this. It's like, well, it's a guy coming on and ranting like a crazy man. If that's what he wants to do, then who am I to tell him no?
Well, they tried to trip him up with that guy. I, I can't remember the exact name, but they said, didn't he send you... This is this kind of blew my mind. They like, didn't he send you ten thousand emails? And Jones is like, yes. And they're like, don't you know that he's insane? And he's like, well, he became a little perturbed with me after about number four thousand. <laughs> so, like... And the 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 thing that ticks me off about that case, though, the the real one that bothers me is how they got it back to. I know they're doing the the deposition under Texas rules, but they they put it back in what Connecticut state court. And um, the uh, the way they got it to Connecticut State Court was that the guy who he interviewed isn't from Connecticut. Alex Jones is obviously in Texas, but the guy who drove the guy he interviewed somewhere one time was from Connecticut that defeated diversity jurisdiction and brought it out of federal court and back to state court, even though the guy who... They just said that the guy who drove him one time was like an actual employee as opposed to just he drove me somewhere for one thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, going back to um, did Jones change his position on the Sandy Hook thing uh, when he was talking? I mean, he did it, He a couple of times when they were asking questions. He's like, well, you know, I'd get information and then later on we'd find out that it wasn't true and I'd walk back the statements. Right. But Jones was like, you know, at the time, that's what we had to go on. And he brought up one thing I think Jones did smart uh, during the conversation because they kept giving him police reports, but the police reports had entire pages blacked out and you could see it when he's flipping through it. Um, and they're like, well, how, how, you know, if you had the information, how didn't you know this? How didn't you know this? And Jones kept going back to, well, you know, they withheld information. We thought that meant there was a cover up. What we didn't know is, and we didn't find out until later on, is what they were covering up was their own incompetence on how they handled the crime scene, on how some of the detective work was handled. And yeah. he's like, look at the, he goes, look at the police report you gave me. Uh, three of the five pages are completely blacked out. So what do we have to work on? We know they admitted openly that they they had some stuff and you, you can see this by the document I'm holding. So he's like, I, you're expecting me to know things I couldn't have possibly known. I only could work with what I had at the time. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the best part is, well, if you had this information, then why didn't you have this? You still don't have it. <laughs> idiot you just brought me a file that's redacted <laughs> right uh so i i you, uh, you i'll let you jump back to your super chats uh you still got seven hours to catch up on uh you're halfway there almost now on your 24 hour. are you gonna make it do you think uh right now i feel good um yeah. i feel like this is a bad decision but i feel okay we'll see we'll we see. gotta get through super chats though once the oh, that's uh, gonna... <laughs> once the battle toads hit i think we'll be good yeah, that'll that'll pick you up a little bit until you get really mad and decide, you know what, I'm going to have a drink to relax. And then by hour 18, you're vomiting in a trash can crying because you never should have agreed to this. Yeah, my no. hair will be numb and my pants will be soaked. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, you guys have a, a good day. Uh, good luck on your stream. I'm sure you can power through it and make it to 24 hours. And yeah, check out the Jones thing if you get a chance. It's real entertaining. Will do, man. Thanks for popping right. on. God bless you, Jim. See you. <laughs> yeah, have a good one, guys.